What's going on, everybody? Today is October 11th. It's Wednesday, and you are watching and listening to the Daily AI Show live. And today, we're going to be talking about the same thing we did last Wednesday. We're trying this out, and it's going to be the things you knew we would talk about in AI news over the past week. So basically, the last seven days. I don't know that we're keeping it all like, you know, to the minute or anything like that. I'm sure there'll be some overlap, um, but there's always new interesting stuff coming out in the world of AI. And these are some of the topics that we individually thought would be interesting. And then we're bringing to you. So I have a few guys I have, uh, you know, I want to talk about um, some new advancements uh, in Adobe's Firefly. Uh, I'd like to talk about Eleven Labs and what they have going on with some overdubbing, which is in other languages, which I just ran and I think is super cool. And then um, some, yeah, some other things like, um, you know, maybe, I don't know if we want to jump into this because Jimmy, I always think about you and like film and stuff like that, but maybe a fun one to jump into is Disney's getting some heat right now because they just came out with Loki season two and right. they're, they're, I mean, it looks pretty obvious to me. I'll share it on my screen real quick, but it looks like <laughs> they used, you know, some sort of AI to generate the background uh, picture. Hey, Ann, what's going on? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. Glad Good morning, back, sunshine. Always happy to see you. <laughs> Always happy to see you, Ann. Uh, let me share my screen super quick. Uh, Spotify Loki. Da, da, da. Good morning, sunshine. Sun, sun, okay, sun. so this is the image in question. And it looks like your typical image or whatever, but some sleuths on X, uh, aka Twitter, um, started going, hey, look, real quick, you can zoom in here and all of a sudden, real some telltale signs of what we would think AI would do, which is not quite get the letters, the Roman numerals on the clock correct. There's some wonky stuff going on. I think they even use the word wonky, which I think is perfect for this particular case. And then it goes on to talk about like, hey, here's the image we think came from like a Shutterstock. I think it was Shutter yeah, Shutterstock, which also goes against Shutterstock's rules on that. So I think this is a good topic to talk about, maybe to kick things off. I don't know, Jimmy, what's your take on this in terms of, you know, what does this mean? I mean, we're coming right off of this writer's strike and, or is it the writer's strike or the other strike that's done right now? One of them's still going, right? The writer's strike just ended. The yeah. writer's strike just ended, which maybe this isn't in that vein, but I don't know, entertainment, big companies using AI. What, what's your take on something like this? Well, I think I think the main issue isn't so much that they they used AI and mm -hmm. that they people, especially in the creative world, are still, uh, you know, split on how to use it properly. We just came off of one strike and we still have another strike going on. And so in the creatives world, uh, the use of AI, how to use it. And what uh, and what this could be as a first step towards a slippery slope is what most most creatives are, are are worried about. And so, when a big company like Disney uses something like whether it was the intro for uh, Secret Invasion that came out a few months ago, or you know this this image, uh, all the creative world's going to be going is going to keep hyper focus they're gonna you know they'll they're gonna try and spot everything and 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 whatnot because i think their their primary goal is just to make sure that everything's done above board there's this isn't snuck behind the process or anything right. like that and so while it might be a little heavy-handed i think um they and i'm sure it's this is not even on the radar of Disney. They're not like their execs and, uh, and you know, uh, the top brass, so to speak. They're not even looking at this stuff. Okay. Yeah. It's always just, oh, we need to create a poster for, for a Loki. Yeah. Okay. Let's put these elements together. And it Some might have been creation. the designer who, who, who took it and, you know, and, and use that Shutterstock image. And if you notice at the end of that Verge article, they actually talk about how, um, Shutterstock does have an an AI program, right? They right. they do yeah. have a, a a collection of uh, AI generated image, and I I think that was pretty recent that they wanted to start that up. Um, but Shutterstock may not even known that this image was AI generated, which then is automatically trusted and assumed when it's used as a library for a designer to put it up on the poster. So right. I, I I think this is probably a little 
bigger or a little smaller than how big they've blown it up to be. Sure. But mm -hmm. uh, in, in makes, a general sense, a it's good... just that concern of how AI is creeping into the uh, the creative process. So I have I have a follow-up question to that. Okay, do you guys remember the movie True Lies with Arnold yep. Schwarzenegger? Oh, yeah. And there's a big scene in True Lies where they, they're actually on, well, they're supposed to be on US-1. It's going down to the Keys and they blow up the bridge. And there was a big thing about it at the time because they're like, dude, they actually blew up a part of the old US-1 bridge. Just literally yesterday, I happened to see an old photo that was like on Facebook, whatever. And it's of the miniatures, the whole crew, the cat, like the, the crew sitting on a miniature bridge that they blew up, right? It's sitting in mm -hmm. the water but because of the perspective and stuff like that. It obviously looks real life, but it's just literally, you know, whatever. Today, you wouldn't blow up a bridge, right? You would just CGI the hell out of it. It would look super real. You wouldn't really know about it. But back then, I remember like T2 and all these movies that came out and stuff like that. Everybody's like, oh, oh, that's not a that's not a miniature. That's not a, that's CGI. That's, you know, and back when we think about Jurassic World and what was going on as a great documentary on Disney about, um, you know, uh, what is it? LM Lights and Magic and ILM and Industrial mm -hmm. Lights and Magic. And, you know, when they started moving away from models to CGI and, and Jurassic Park and making the dinosaur run was one of the first things they sort of yeah. started doing that with. And it was some guy at one computer in a corner office. And now it's like their whole bread and butter, right? So I don't know, is this, my whole point to saying all that, Jimmy, is, is this just that? Is this just like, we're just pointing it out because it's different, but the reality is what would we expect? If Disney is a company and they want to save time and money, just like mm -hmm. every other company does, and mm -hmm. this is a means to a faster end to produce these types of graphics. So now it takes this graphic artist, whoever did this, 30 minutes instead of three hours to create. I mean, of, of course they're going to want to do that, but they do yeah. need to be above board in terms of saying like how they're doing it. Is that sort of the idea here? I, I, I think so. I think so. I, because there's just so much, uh, you know, the camps have been riled up so to speak over the last few months and you know there's there's some strong points on on both sides there i look at it as any new technology or tool you know especially how useful it is you're going to you're you're going to use that right that's gonna be integrated it's just the speed in which it uh it's being integrated and uh you know and and any fears that you you might see down the line especially with talk like you know, like Hinton saying like, oh, and, you know, five, 10 years, they'll be smart, you know, AIs will be smarter than humans and stuff like that, sort of talking yeah. about the, our yesterday's show. Yeah. But, you know, it, I, I think it's just like any new tool, right? You're going to integrate that, uh, how you do it. I think just right now, everyone's just charged uh, about the subject and there isn't any clear you know, regulations or pays, people have not put it in a box and labeled it to understand it, compartmentalize it yet. It's all so new. So yes, yeah. you're, you're going to have people but, like pointing things out and it's like, oh, this is wrong. And just like how you, you were saying about uh, the CGI, but eventually the CGI will get better and better until now. Well, it's completely well, the problem is, yeah. the, so I'm sorry, Aaron, something. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say is, one, one that last analogy was, um, there was an interview uh, a few years ago with George Lucas about Star Wars, and he was saying the original trilogy, a trilo uh, trilogy, they used some, uh, they used a little bit of computer uh, graphics uh, in that, and it was like three percent, and mm -hmm. now it's like ninety-seven percent or something along those lines, and that's yeah. what happens in twenty, thirty years. So I, I wasn't intending to talk about this, but you guys raised that subject and it just triggered something in the old noggin. So I'm in a, um, I don't know if any of you have been watching the Amazon Prime TV series, The Wheel of Time by any chance, mm. which yeah, has got yeah. a lot of CGI in it. And um, yeah. so I, it's buried up there in the bookshelf is the 14 books that the guy wrote for the series, mm. which has got like some ridiculous So you hate the show then, word. probably, right? No, well, <laughs> yes and no. So here's the thing. <laughs> what, I don't, what I don't like about the show is that uh, they've diverted quite significantly from the books in yeah. some aspects. Um, and now I understand the challenges of creating a, a, you know, a TV series with eight episodes per series and all those books. It's just not going to happen. You have to change things. But it's caused a lot of grief with, with a lot of people. And I'm just looking ahead two, three, five, maybe 10 years to the point where it'll be so easy to take a book, 
stuff it into like digitally injected into some fancy new AI tool and it could literally duplicate it in real life. I think that's going to be a, I mean, that's years away, but I think it's going to be a really interesting um, change to the market and whether they'll adapt to it or not, I don't know. So, but mm. I don't have the, I have got no idea when that's going to happen. So. Mm. Yeah, I agree. So, AI in the news. Um, yep. I, I, I want to throw out uh, AMD is uh, trying to give NVIDIA a run for their money. Um, made a deal recently. I forgot the company, yeah. but uh, wanting to create chipsets that are going to... Uh, now, why is that important to you and me and the, the viewers? Well, that just allows uh, competition, which drives down price, which allows more entrance to the market. This is, you know, capitalism 101, but I think it's really going to help um, with having more access to those chips because NVIDIA is at a, you know, they're, they're turning them out as fast as they can to make enough of these GMUs for processing of language models. Although I do think that's a that's not going to be a future. Like, that's not going to be how it goes in the future. I think we're going to be getting smaller and smaller models. Mm -hmm. Is gonna, They're going to be more efficient. I, there's a theory that that's the right way to go. Like, everybody's going to have a different model. And uh, I think that's... You know, right now, the big companies are saying, no, we have to be the one API access, come to our language model. But I think as it gets easier to deploy your own, I mean, Mistral, if you're familiar with Mistral, you can actually download that, run it on your computer without any internet. Hmm. So if you're so inclined, there's easy ways to do so. So now that was one little nugget. One other thing I saw, which was interesting there, Scientists believe in was it five years that we'll be able to talk with animals, and really? specifically, I well, I shouldn't say we should be able to talk with them, but we'll be able to mimic bird communication and mimic whale communication because with mm -hmm. with the use of AI, which I can't quite fathom <laughs> what, what that really means. But I just thought that was an interesting nugget that they're they're on track, and I think it'll be faster than that given how fast things are moving recently. But they're able to analyze the, the the crows or analyze the whales and understand and then be able to repeat back. And can you imagine? I mean, I think we're kind of just, to, just to be able to right? understand what's going mm. on, um, you know. Well, the first thing that pops into mind for for that kind of thing is is we know animals are more sensitive to changes in the environment, like earthquakes, right? Yeah, you know, horses all get skittish. I, I'm sure Andy knows all, all, all about that kind of stuff, but wouldn't it be great to help early warning systems? Don't I mention cancer. There's cancer sniffing dogs, dogs drug sniffing yeah. dogs. They can right. they can exactly. see ailments. I mean, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll add one that uh, was in the news this week at Oxford University in the UK. Uh, scientists there in neuroscience uh, found a way to differentiate schizophrenic patients from normal patients in responding yeah, to. Amen just a simple task like name 10 animals. And it has something to do with the way schizophrenic uh, brains work and how they store memories. Uh, and it has an impact on the way that they output, you know, the words for that task. So hmm. you can imagine now in, in this vein of discussion that AIs mm -hmm. will be able to detect just from verbalizations, human verbalizations, yeah, mental uh, mental issues that are early warning systems in effect. Wow, I think I so let man, me, let this me, all kind of goes back to what we we're talking about with you know um, intelligence yesterday and and how intelligence isn't just one. There's not one factor, one one metric, or something like that. You know, there's there. I think we're gonna maybe find in the next couple of years that from understanding dolphins better and we know how intelligent dolphins are as far as you know, and gorillas and and these and different animals that have extreme intelligence just not in the same way that humans do so just kind of a throwback to yesterday's topic but it's it's that all of that's really really interesting to me and i i kind of agree ai and algorithms are going to unlock um so many more Opportunities, you know, my mom passed from from a cancer in um, 2008, and she she told me at the time she'd beaten cancer once, breast cancer, and then she was free for about six years. It came back when it came back everywhere. In that interim, when she was essentially cancer free at the five year mark, I remember her saying to me, "I'm going to just try to live long enough to the cure of cancer." That that was the way she looked at it. Was like, if I can live long enough, I can I can beat cancer by finding the cure to cancer. Now this is 2000. 
five, right? But now here we are in 2023. My mom passed 15 years ago at this point. But now I look at it and say, are we five years away from the cure to cancer? And is that because of AI? And this is not that this is in the news, but it's like kind of always in the news, which is like now AI is coming up with, I just read this about how it's coming up with these really, really unique cocktails of drugs that are already on the market and already out there, but it's figuring out, hey, this specific cancer patient needs this cocktail of already approved drugs. It's not like we have to go through 10 years of FDA approval mm -hmm. in order to figure out how to help that individual specific patient get through whatever they're trying to do in their treatment. I just think that is where we're going to be very soon is that no, 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 like you, me, Jimmy, Andy, we could all have the same technical ailment <laughs> or disease, but yeah. it may be very, very hyper personalized to each one of us on how we get those treatments. It, thanks it just, to and AI. And just think this couldn't have happened 10 years ago or 20, like the mapping of the genome, the data, CRISPR, like because CRISPR, we have yeah. gotten to where we are now, now AI, it's like, it's like perfect storm. I get goosebumps. Like it's, yeah. it's really weird that it won't, it wouldn't have been able to do much, much if it was 15 years ago that, that LLMs came out. Right. But now that we have other things that in science and medicine that have been developed, holy crap, you know, it can take all that data and just absorb it and just like spit. It's really fun. Yeah. 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 At, at so on the topic of medical stuff. So I ran across this article it was published yesterday on business insider. The headline is AI is overhyped, Warren Buffett's right-hand man, Charlie Munger, says. I thought that was interesting. And he said, amongst other things, he's previously said AI is not going to cure cancer. Yeah, maybe not. But the thing I thought was most interesting was that Munger is 99 years old, so probably not what you would call highly techy, if you know what I mean. So, you know, I think there are a lot of people out there who don't think this stuff is going to happen, but I think realistically it is, so... Um, mm -hmm. Also on the medical subject, Google's just announced a new generative generative AI search capability for doctors. They'll be allowed using Google Cloud. They'll be allowed to um, doctors will be able to put their documentation, their notes, their scans, all into one system. They'll be able to search through it and get a lot more cool stuff out of it. So I thought that was really interesting in the medical space as well. Yeah. So the what specifics about that is or, their sorry, vertex Jimmy, AI offering on cloud. They yeah. they now allow the MedPalm two um, model uh, to be available. Yep, that's Google's, right? Yeah, yeah. MedPalm two. Yes. That's Google. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, naturally, so naturally, everyone's going. Well, we'll go slowly. We don't want to. We don't trust it just yet. But right. Like the Mayo right. But it, there's it there's some things. great um some great research responses they've seen from that. It's like ninety two percent accuracy off of that model, which yeah. is you know, fantastic percentage. Uh, but yes, uh, in the medical field, I, I would assume you'd want to be uh, uh, more like 100%. Um, yeah. Another Google thing that they announced, Google Assistant now has Bard. So uh, hopefully as Bard gets better, uh, Google Assistant may be the first to to do the the personal assistant that, uh, that I've always wanted. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did want to touch on a couple of other uh, AI news things uh, from the dev side of things. So um, I don't know if anyone knows about Replit. They're they're mm -hmm. essentially their uh, their service and their tools uh, just help uh, coders, programmers to mm -hmm. you know build apps and and things like that. But they created something called Replit AI, which is essentially their copilot. Right uh, to help okay. you complete um, uh, complete your apps and uh, complete the the code uh, help you out with that. But the big thing they did was they announced that they came out with a new three uh, three billion parameter uh, model for everyone to have access. So all all of their users, as opposed to just like premium users, which I think they're mentioning something like they have twenty three million programmers out there uh, who can take advantage of it and stuff like that. And the one that I really am excited about is uh, Docker announced their J Gen uh, AI stack. So you can use Docker, which is um, uh, a container uh, app basically, uh, or a container development environment. Um, so that you can wrap your your apps and run them on pretty much anything. But this is something Robert had mentioned in our Slack earlier. They're doing a distribution through Olama. 
So if you're if you're familiar with that, that's a way to run models locally and very easily on Mac OS and Linux and uh, hopefully uh, Windows soon. But nice clean packages running local models, which is I think like Robert's saying, everyone's going to do their smaller personal uh, models, and hopefully everyone will have their own. We oh, lost. They just lost Andy. <laughs> just as we're about to talk to Andy, we lost him. Hopefully, yeah. he'll be back. Maybe it's a, uh, hey, a, a guys. Let, let me sh let me share a little like ten second nugget with you, which I found I thought was fascinating. Sure. So we we talked earlier about those AI chips. So running chat, I just found this today. Running chat GPT is very expensive for the company. Every query costs about four cents, according to an analyst. If GPT queries grow to a tenth of the scale of Google search, it would require roughly. $48.1 billion worth of GPUs initially and about $16 billion worth of chips a year to keep it operational. So we definitely need some advances in that space or it's just going to get out of control. And not to mention that like Microsoft and OpenAI have got a lot of money. Water water usage. I keep reading a lot yeah. of um, you know, yeah. things about yeah. like the amount of water yeah. usage it takes. So there's obviously going to have to be some massive adva um, uh, advancements in efficiencies uh, in these these computing processes and, and water is because about. it's cooling down the yeah. In case people weren't listening, don't know that. Yeah. Say again, Robert. Well, in case people don't know, water is used to cool down these processors, and and that's why there's a lot of water usage. Um, and, I, and I've, I've not this week, but like just in general, I've seen, I think it's Microsoft is testing, like they basically take these huge, I'm going to say the wrong word, but let's just call them like data centers and they just submerge them in the ocean and they're like right offshore yeah. and they're mm -hmm. running cables from it. And that's one of their ways to like, try to help with, um, you know, that, that cooling process or whatever, which, you know, makes sense. I mean, it's a new <laughs> way of thinking, I suppose, but it sounds like we're just going to have to come up with all sorts of more uh efficiency models for how we're going to do this because obviously this is not going to slow down it's only going to speed up we're only at the very tip of usage of g you know chat gpt every time i'm talking to people obviously in the sales side of the world um i ran a workshop yesterday for an hour and a half with a couple people and you know some of them had just started using chat gpt some of them were using it now and starting to create their own prompts right well this is just a small microcosm of of the sales departments at large six to nine months there won't be a sales department out there that's not you know, like using chat gpt or a, a version of that like claude or whatever it's going to be like hundreds of times a day in the the cross of just doing prospecting and researching i mean think about how many sdr i know i always say that sales development representatives a uh, business development representatives your sales reps right the people who are going out there and doing cold calls and stuff how much volume there is today just in cold calls, emails, and all that. Now overlap that with a, a, a prompt search to be more personalized for every single one of them, plus future automations, which we all know are going to be more and more uh, commonplace. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what that volume is, but it's tens of the something to the something power, I'm sure. Of uh, Okay. So Andy, well. what do you, what do you get back with us? What can you bring to the AI in the news this week? So I want to, I want to share some trends that I'm observing in the, sort of evolution of applications and also the configuration of some of the tools that we work with. So I want to zero in on the whole idea of building a chat bot, giving it the company's documents, then mm -hmm. providing chat bot access either internally or externally with consumers uh, so that they can access the corporate knowledge base in effect, the ones that are approved, you know, like uh, for uh, consumer consumption. So that ends up being a, a kind of a mini industry in, in the early days of AI. And we all know people who are doing this as a service for companies. And to this point, the way that has to be done is you have to set it up so that you are, um, you know, accessing one of the large language models behind the scenes through an API that's, that's articulating the chatbot's responses. So it takes the data and then it provides a response. And as a, as a service provider, uh, and Carl Ye is one of the guys on our, our team here at the Daily AI Show, he's done this about uh, 20 times, like with mm -hmm. different small and medium-sized businesses. And so he's really practiced at this. Now, the way he does that is he uses his own API and then provides a 
turnkey service to the company and then has to charge them for the utilization. Now that can create some cash flow problems if the company that you're providing service to is ramping up dramatically the number of queries that are going against your their chatbot, their chatbot, but it's on Carl's API. Well, right. these kinds of systems are gonna you know, have these feature enhancements and one just came out this week from one of the companies that provides these chatbots called Retune. And they added a feature that's quite different. And it just tweaks my ideas about how all of these players are going to make feature adjustments and evolve. And that feature is you can, you can now uh, have multiple chatbots in your own account and you can apply the company's API key, not yours. Super smart. Right. Super smart. So that, and, and I haven't seen that yet. I don't think it's available in any of the, the platforms for chatbot, uh, you know, development right at the moment. But that's a very interesting thing. And it's related in my mind to something that I, I think is very cool about a company called Respell that you mentioned earlier uh, in, in our Slack thread, because mm -hmm. you're working with Respell, Brian, and maybe some of the others of you. Are. I, have, mm -hmm. I haven't started doing it yet, but uh, very interesting because they use on the back end, they use a service called Open Router that accesses any API for any of the large language models and then doesn't upcharge you for it. It just charges you for that use in the Respell account. So yep. simplifying and, and, and just making it easier for people to develop business and provide service applications to customers through feature enhancements on these systems. Yeah, Real quick, Respell, oh, go for it. Uh, my best uh, customer uh, experience with a company to date. I I reached out to them because I was having trouble uh, implementing an API call uh, as part of the, the process that I wanted to build this automation. Uh, we worked back and forth on it, and uh, then they realized the better implementation is if they built something on their back end for me. Mm -hmm. So wow. They, they're that's, doing that's, that's a good sign. I was just like, that's amazing. So yeah, if you want if you want AI automation or line law, uh, language model uh, automation, respell's probably the place to go. Yeah, I'll it's, just it's add to that. They, I was I was on a call with one of the uh, founders or, or you know starting work is there or whatever, and he just said to me, he goes, "We want to make respell so easy that your grandma can build." automations like they just i'm not saying they're there today they're still like you know they're early on but sounds like a wanted... perfect partnership for daily ai show i think we need, I think need so. they're cool folks yeah i think they should cool. recognize our massive audience and <laughs> maybe we <should> demo <laughs> yes okay really really we're, really motivated. Really thinking, Robert. <laughs> we're running out of time but i got two quick ones to share and then uh, i actually probably can't go over today so um i will try to do this fairly quickly um to share your audio, share screen, share tab or screen instead. All right. Well, then I have to do entire screen. Okay. So we can get. So Brian, this is your TD, TLDR. That's this, this yeah. fine. Yeah. All right. Here we go. TLDR. Yeah. 11 Labs um, has a new uh, overdubbing uh, feature, which I think is super cool. So naturally, I had to try that. So we got one in Spanish and one in French. Let's do the Spanish one first. Aquí no hay que una forma realmente fácil de tomar un archivo de audio que tienes y convertirlo en un blog. Ahora, yeah. en este caso de, de uso particular, lo que hice fue ejecutar el show de EA. So this is the video I just put out on LinkedIn no, this morning, they. speaking of Respell. And this one is in uh, French. Pues será muy vraiment fácil de prendre un fichier audio que vous avez y de le transformer en un blog. Maintenant, dans ce cas d'utilisation particulier, ce que j'ai fait, c'est de lancer le show IA quotidiennement. Well, I, but I have no idea if it's good or bad. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know either because I don't speak French and I don't speak Spanish, but let's let's put that aside and assume that 11 Labs knows what they're doing. It's not like um, it's not like Hey Jen, like we demoed um, a while back where the mouth is, it, my mouth is not synced up. It's literally an overdub. But I love that the emphasis on certain words like Spotify or when I said blog or whatever, I can hear it. And it put that emphasis in sort of my voice in my tone in the other language. I think that's super cool. So this has amazing use cases for business. Okay, second one, Adobe Firefly came out with some new updates. They had already had stuff like this where you could do you could do um, uh, text and you could put other things into it. So putting like sprockets and blogs into small gadgets into the daily AI show. But that's really like nothing compared to what they've done for like text and image. Um, and they're gonna have this new text to vector, which I think is gonna be super cool. 
And then, um, well, that's the blog about it real quick. Here we go. So this, they have what they call um, beta, uh, Firefly Image 2. This right here is their old Image 1. You can kind of see it's in white, but that's Image 1. And now this is Image 2. So really big improvements as far uh, as so, I'm so you're you're taking out one of the girls and replacing her with a model, what? <laughs> yeah. Right. So um and There's then we certainly can, a lot more facial stuff on there. Yeah. One versus two. Right. Mm. Uh let's see, food. Uh one or big big difference there. One of versus course, two. Yeah. Uh sci-fi, which I don't know. I mean, sci-fi is gonna probably look okay either way. Uh, and then uh, let's see what his backdrops here. So this is one, and this much is much better. So, yeah. Well, my question so, is, can it do stormtroopers sitting around a fire on indoor? Because it didn't do a very good job last time I tried it. Well, fun. that's it. That's a. I think we're. I don't have enough time to do it. You guys can always do it, but I that. would say, look for business use cases because we're always talking about, um, you know, what what can be uh, helpful to businesses. Well, overdubbing your videos mm -hmm. into other languages, massive use case. So 11 labs could be a great uh, option for you there. You'd have to look at sort of the pricing per video to see what makes sense. But Adobe Firefly, which was already out there, that's not something brand new, but their beta two version of their image, obviously, as you can see, is a drastic improvement over what their um, uh, initial Firefly one was or whatever. So if you tried Firefly in the past, you thought, uh, I don't know, mid journey is better. I like this better. I highly encourage you to go back, especially if you're in marketing or you're in design or anything, and go look what they're doing, especially when we're able to do that vector. I don't know. I'm really excited about the vector, the text, the vector. That's That kind of lights up all sorts of ideas for me. What so is, what those is are my two. What's, what does Firefly cost? What does it cost to use? It's free. Nothing. It's free. It's free. Um, it's the, 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 yeah, the free, the, the Firefly. I have to sign in with my Adobe account, but that doesn't, I don't have any plan on the backside of that. So I think you get so many credits, just kind of like you do with Bing and doing Dolly 3 right now. And then mm -hmm. they probably refresh every month. Um, so yeah, right now it's a, it's a super easy tool to use and uh, I really like it. So that's it for me and cool. I got to go. So you guys want to wrap this one up and I'll, I'm not going to hit end stream this time. I'm not going <laughs> to hit end stream. <laughs> I'm just going to leave the studio. But you guys have fun. Wrap uh, it up, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Thanks, Brian. See ya. So, All right, I, Robert, um, what do you I, got? Is I, your actually TLDR? Went... I don't have a TLDR. Um, this week was a little bit slower than last week, so uh, last week is really packed full. I've already mentioned kind of my my things that are interesting, so I'll just skip myself. My gotcha. TLDR is the biggest news of of the the coming week will be when I get voice. In chat, right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, right. we, we right. want voice, voice I want vision. and vision. Let's go. I've got yeah. vision. I've got vision, but I don't. Uh, have I still don't have it. So yeah, I um I actually jumped into um because Canva they've got uh, the whole new magic design, magic media. So I made a little twelve second video. I won't show you guys, but it was pretty easy to do it. And I just pulled in the pictures of us that we had for the website. And it put together a cool little video. So, you know, there's, it's entry level stuff, but it, it, it's coming everywhere. So keep your eyes open. Things are just going to get more and more wild. That's my TLDR. Gotcha. Uh, and I just wanted to go a little more lighthearted. Apparently, uh, this app called uh, Epic, uh, E P I K, uh, is a huge trend uh, on the um, for the Gen Z side, which we know from research is the biggest adopter for using uh, AI today. Um, and apparently, it uh, added a new feature to make 90s era yearbook photos out of your selfies. And so that's uh, that's the newest trend. And apparently it's so popular, they're making something like quarter of a million dollars a day off of it. Wow. So uh, <laughs> business, look at Gen Z, see what she can do. I guess that's how it applies to uh, to our, uh, our, yeah. our show. All right. Um, I think uh, I think we're well, well over. Everybody's time. left. We've already lost two of our members. <laughs> So I'm just going to call it at this point. Thank you so much, everybody. See you later. Us. And uh, yeah, take it, uh, take it easy. Aloha.